Hi, everyone. Good Hi, afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> I'm here this afternoon with a lovely guest, Debra. She will introduce herself. But okay. um, before she, I go into Debra, let me try and see what, who we are here. So, okay. Debra, okay. we'll be with you soon. Okay. And um, who are we? We are Big J. Little J. Okay. And Madam J. J. <laughs> Mighty J. Mighty J. Mighty J. Mighty J. So we are the J girls, and uh, this afternoon we have a special guest on our broadcast, and uh, we've been talking about all about Africa. And mm -hmm. this afternoon we are going to talk about all about Congo. Ah, yes. <laughs> I've always been interested in that country because of the way. The name is really slick. You cannot <laughs> tell us no. That, that's not what we say. Democratic Republic <laughs> of Congo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've always been that. Your name is very slick. So I'm going to bring on board Debra, and the J girls are going to fly out and begin to ask other questions about all about Congo. And we are so pleased yes. to have Debra. So Debra, welcome on the show. So please, can you introduce yourself? as the girls begin to speak to you okay thank you um my name is deborah i am what we people call a human rights lawyer so i work on policies to see how we can organize people lives human okay. being lives around okay. the world so i was born in the congo the congo uh -huh. is a big 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 country in central africa it is also called the heart of Africa. Ooh. The richest, <laughs> richest, richest country in this planet. Am I not jealous already? My country is very rich too. What do you mean? Potentially <laughs> one of the mighty country, but we've been at war for so many years. So uh -huh. we never had a chance to build our country. Yeah. So we've been colonized for 52 years by the Belgium, the wow. most the most disastrous, the most unhuman, the most and the most really disgusting colonization in human history. Okay? Did you say 52 years? 52 years, yes. By Belgium. By Belgium, yes, for 52 years. Oh and God. in 1960, we fought for our independence and we become independent. Our national hero is the artist Emery Lumumba. Okay. He died a year after he was democratically elected. He was killed by the Belgium. Oh. After the country went back in civil war for another five years. Until 1965, when Mobutu took the power with the Americans and ran the country for peace for 35 years. So wow. I was born in 1975, the greatest years of the history of the Congo. My parents called me money, fortune. That was the name they gave me. So wow. Traditional way oh, of course. I think my name is Feza. I means think like every other African country, um, Congo must have had a very, she's kind of frozen, but Congo must have had a very, very uh, difficult uh, past and difficult heritage. Mm -hmm. um when yeah. i was in school i used to read about uh, the democratic republic of congo they were always at war always yeah. at yeah. war there's always oh, conflict oh. in congo yeah. and yeah. i've always had this heart and i've always prayed for congo that i don't know why what is it about congo that is causing constant quarreling and war what is it about congo I think because there is a legend in the Congo saying that when God created the world, he yeah. created Africa. But the starting point of Africa was the Congo. So mm. all, all tribe was in the Congo and they start emerging from all parts in the world. So the yeah. Congo is the place that anyone has been, everybody has been, and there is a, a, a link history between. It's the only country in Africa who has 350 tribes. 350 tribes. But Nigeria is a lot of tribe. We have uh, we have about yeah, we have about 250 in Nigeria though. But we have 350, 350. <laughs> I dropped my cup. I dropped my cup. <laughs> 
We yeah, have okay. 425 dialect. 400. Oh, Nigeria's yeah. dialect is a lot. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. I like, we, we don't oh, play with dialect. Yeah. <laughs> we have four national language. Four national language. So we have three. Europe, you have Lingala, South, you have Chiluba, East, yeah. you have Swahili, West, you have Kikongo. Do you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. Congo is born like me, naturally, mm -hmm. it's brought up three lingual. Okay? Yeah. And I speak seven languages. Because, seven? Yeah, I speak seven oh. languages because I was brought up three lingual already. <laughs> So the other languages come in, come up, come up, come up, and that's it. <laughs> so in the Congo, you have one, seven to 10 Congolese at least speak two languages, at least two wow. or more, because this is how the country is so rich. And I understand if you have a peaceful country like that, with this potential on population, it's yeah. a bomb. You know, in the concept of a nation, it's a danger. Yeah. We have for the atomic bomb, we have that in the Congo. All right, we have the same uranium for those bombs, is killing the world. Yeah, we have all yeah. that. So you can do that all in the Congo and make people so jealous that they don't want local people or autochthon people to live at peace. So that they divide people, they divide so, them. So when I was looking at the map of Congo this uh, this afternoon. Um, I understand. I from the map, my my imagination popped up that Congo is in the middle of a lot of other countries, like in the Central Africa, and so you have this. Um, you have because of the demarcation and because of what colonialism did, mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. tribes from other of those countries you are surrounding with came up mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. join to be Congo. That's a yeah. major yeah. problem. Because yeah. uh, a tribe that should have been alone is actually mm -hmm. uh, joined into a a country which should have been a tribe on its own and mm -hmm. Africa as a nation. And mm -hmm. um, like you just said, because of the natural resources, um, Congo is prolific and um, a lot of the colonial masters are interested more in what they can get from the country. They don't care about mm -hmm. the people and they don't care destroying yeah. the people to get what they want constantly. Yeah. I, yes. I, I think I get that drift and that is happening in every other country in Africa, even up the to difference, the difference between between those countries in Africa. You got the period of colonizations, okay? Yeah, yeah. You have been colonized by the British, all right? Yeah. yeah. The Zimbabwean have been colonized by the British. The yeah. first time I took a trip to Zimbabwe from the Congo, I was yeah. amazed to see that Zimbabwean have roads. Belgium never built any road in the Congo. Never. Oh my goodness. We never had any road built by the Belgian column. Never. So it was all about just taking and never all putting taking. anything. If, 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 for example, on that day you did not give enough uh, quota of caoutchouc or chocolate, the, yeah. the hands of your children or they may hang them this is what the colon did in the congo you know this this we, we have an history of violence in the congo a brutal violence and the the, the, the response to the Congolese people uh, to the belgium is just repugnant. it's not a collaboration attitude yeah. like between the british and the, no 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 between the Congolese and the belgium is hatred Okay, so let me give an example. For instance, in Nigeria and in a lot of the British colonized countries yeah. in Africa, there was yeah. a lot of slave trading and, you know, pe just people were taken out of their country into the Western countries to be slave trade. Yes, Ansu yeah. is going to answer your question. Let me just ask this question. They are really dying. They want me out of this political scene <laughs> so they can ask that question. Now, now uh, at that point, in, in, in like, like, People were taken out of Africa here. In Congo, were people taken to Belgium or it was just all about harvesting the natural resources again? Were people taken as slaves to Belgium? Okay. There were, this is how it, it, it used to operate at the time of, of slave trade. Yeah. The king of Belgium had a number, a quota of people, human beings, like merchandise, to sell to the slave uh, the slave trade people to the to the americans yeah. so he himself as king could maybe 
put a pack of 10,000 people on the ship. They'll yeah. never put their foot in the in Belgium. They'll go straight to the West Indies. And it ah. gets them. Yeah. Okay, so the slave trade was between the Belgium and the other West African countries. Not that the slaves were going to Belgium. Never. Yes. <laughs> You, you, the only slave you can take to Belgium is the children you take to the zoo. They'll stay in the zoo with the animals. Okay, that, that, let's not talk about the history again because I'm going to start crying. Let <laughs> it, it. <laughs> let's make it kid friendly. Let's just, let's keep it as kid friendly because we, we, history yeah. sometimes history sometimes causes a lot of pain in my heart, and yeah. I know there is no way to rewrite yeah. history. There's yeah. no way to rewrite history, but I believe there is a way to move forward in the sense of acceptance, in the sense of freedom work you're doing to mm -hmm. make people relevant and to see that we are all equal. Yes. I, I, really, I really want to move away from the past and the slavery ideology, but it's difficult sometimes when you are still enslaved mentally up to today. Because it's difficult sometimes when you are still harassed up to we today. We need to know where we come from or how we get here. Yeah. That is why, even though yeah. we don't want to want, not, we don't want to go back to that. But yeah. how do you end up here? Yeah, and that's the story, and they need to know that it's important. Yeah. So, girls, have you learned a bit of Congo politics? How do you feel yeah, about I'm, that? I, 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 I'm talking about like, a bit about history, like yeah. So like, you've learned so about the history of Congo. like in one of our African books. Mm -hmm. Africa is my home. Mm -hmm. The people from America, the part that you know, not allowed to use slavery, they were mm -hmm. taking the African from taking them into slavery. Okay, so she said it's sad. Let me just interpret what both of them are saying. And I got an mm -hmm. I got a child slavery book for them, and it okay. was about the little girl that was taken from Congo. I think no, is it Congo or Liberia? Yeah, wait, I think is that Liberia or Congo? Yeah. Liberia. Okay, so there was a little girl that was taken from Liberia, and I was mm -hmm. she was mm -hmm. captured and she was put into the ship to America. But at yeah. least by the time this girl was twenty one, she came back to our country. So my little girl is just narrating how, in her imagination, the ordeal of taking the children away into ship. So yeah. for me, yeah. I try to educate them about slavery, and I try to bring it from the child aspect that it wasn't just adults that were taking; children were taken through. And some mm -hmm. of them, their life were cut short. Some of them never saw Africa again. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. of them did. And, you know, some of them are the brilliant black Americans we know today. But okay. there okay. were also children like them that were taken. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to ask Debra the first question. Yeah. All right, so come on. What sorts of food do you eat? You need to amplify that voice. What sorts of food do you eat in the Congo? Oh, oh in the Congo, we have, I think the food you eat in the Congo is very similar to all the rest of Africa. You know, mm -hmm. we have cassava leaves. You know, you have we what? have cassava leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. we have cassava leaves. We have fish. We have meat. I mean, we, we cook the same way you can cook in Nigeria. I don't think there is a big difference between that. Because we, we, we have the same forest all over Africa, and this the content of those forests, these animals, we eat them as the same and we cook them thoroughly, you know. Do Go you on. eat cassava leaves? Yes, we do eat cassava leaves. It's the main food in the Congo. <laughs> oh my goodness. We eat the we eat the tubes. We eat the tubes. I, I don't know whether we eat the leaves. I've never eaten the leaves. I can't remember if I ever ate the we leaves, eat but we the eat the tubes. tubes. We uh -huh. eat the tubes and we eat the leaves, the green leaves. We call wow. it tofu. Wow. It's the, it's the, if you, you just said the baby and you, you put it, you have plenty of milk here. Yeah. Because you produce a lot of milk and you can feed the baby as much as you want. That's the cassava. cassava leaves. Leaves. Now so we need to teach, we need to teach the uh, the British or Scottish people that if yeah. you are pregnant and you need a lot of milk, tell Debra to get you cassava leaves. So that you immediately have <laughs> I, I just left <laughs> my children in England and the, the baby was there. She, the she she's a she's a <laughs> <from that. laughs> Okay. Now I know she was asking about kind of food, but I was I'm interested in kind of dish you eat. What kind of dish you do you eat in Congo apart from eating the cassava leaf? I mean the dish has to be simplified. You cook the meal, it has always to be accompanied with vegetables, green vegetables. Okay. 
You okay. can't just cook fish without making green vegetable aside. You yeah. make the, the, the cassava that you, you call it iwisa. In South Africa, they call it iwisa, the white iwisa. You okay. make the iwisa or you make the rice. You make the vegetables, the, the green vegetable, cassava leaves or kalalo, which is mm -hmm. called kalalo. We have that, we call it bitekuteku in the Congo, different name, but same okay. thing. It could and be then, the same thing in Nigeria, but just a different name. Name, absolutely. It's the, this is why I'm saying we eat similar. The black African continent, we eat similar. That's the name are just different. Yeah. The name are, uh, I was invited to the African Association of Scotland, and it was a Nigerian chef who cooked. I bought yeah. the food in my house, and I look at all this. I mean, what all of this? What, what did they call them? They have a different name calling it. <laughs> but you know, that's the, that's the interesting thing about uh, about us. But the difference between Nigeria, maybe Congo, and um, some other South African countries is the number of food, the yeah. number of different food. Because in Nigeria, we have so many dishes that you can't even count them. But in some, other country, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, in some other African countries, they just have one staple food. Yeah. And so that is one of the things uh, the girls are trying to understand that. Uh, do, do you have a lot of dishes like they have in Nigeria? Because if you want to take Nigeria, you'll be taking them tribe by tribe because each tribe might have about 10 different mm -hmm. dishes. Oh, she's dying for a question. What's your question? What's your question? Go ahead. Go ahead, darling. What's your question? Do you eat something different if you're having breakfast or something? Okay, so do you have different meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yes. Uh, the breakfast, it was introduced by the colon. That's the colon behavior. So our breakfast okay. was just bread, tea, and milk. That's, a, okay. that's, modern. that's modern. Because in our Congolese culture, we eat all the time. What, what we call in northern time, men meal. <laughs> you, can, you can have your men meal in the morning, you can have it in the afternoon, you can have it in the evening. So yeah. in our culture, we, don't, we are not bothering about having tea, coffee. No, no, no. The men meal. You eat your yeah. strong, you go to work. When you finish your work, you come home, you get another strong meal. And, meal. meal. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and the, the children have to understand that because we were farmers, in uh, a lot of people in Africa were farmers, Apart from other trade, uh, other like and all that, they have yeah. to eat very heavy to go to the farm. So Absolutely. they eat like they eat like ever in the morning, or yeah. you know the, the swallow. They eat yeah. it in the morning so that their stomach could be heavy to go to the farm. Fufu, yeah, they eat fufu in the morning. Fufu in the morning. You eat yeah, Santa. You go to the farm and another fufu, you go to sleep. <laughs> So that's it. I think I think through a lot of it, uh, modernization and colonization really had changed African diet too. Absolutely. Because right yeah. now you now see people eating pancake and see yeah. people yeah. eating bread. It wasn't like it's that in our culture. That is not Africa. No, 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 yeah. no. That is not Africa. No. <laughs> that's true. Thank you for that. So, Jamie, what's the next question? No. Okay. You want to have what? What's your question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dressing, please let's not talk about dressing. What well, let's talk about dressing? What's dressing of Congo, Congolese people? Oh, the Congo has its own textile of making in the Congo. So we have yeah. our own textile. Um and then those own textile when 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 we, we, we give out to our own people make our dresses and uh -huh. usually it's a, it's a, you got the first lane, um, lane down and the top one, you cover another one on the top. The, okay. the idea, your leg cannot be seen outside. That's the respect. You cannot wear something else like this. No, 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 no. You need to be there. Wow. That's the culture. So the, the Congo culture, your legs cannot, particularly when you're a married woman, don't yeah. wear something by putting your leg out. Otherwise, otherwise, don't say you are whole. And when you're not married, you're wearing like that, the, your, your legs and your the, your tights are outside, you are whole. So you need to cover yourself. So, Deborah, Jemima, yeah. Judaida, from now on, you need to dress <laughs> and cover yourself totally because you're an African. No, yeah. 
Yes, just your feet to be sure. I have a 15 years old daughter. Every time I have to run after her, come back, come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to raise up and that's interesting because um in, in 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 nigeria we dress a lot conservative in the olden dress compared to now but yeah. i know that yeah. some of my mom's picture when i was really a young girl she they still have this very your tiny kind of um, funky as uh, mini skirt kind of traditional clothes. so i think over time women started moving from the very long conservative clothing to uh shorter ones as trends modernization and modernization not this us bringing up what about children in scotland they're changing they're changing you know but again as parents you, you still want to put them that idea in mind your yeah. body's precious. you can expose your body so easily your body is precious you know yeah it's important yeah okay so that's about what about the men how does the men dress oh i think they become more more modern because the man that is respected in the congo is the one is wearing a modern suit but again for 35 years the the tie was banned in the congo completely banned so the man will wear it's a suit that cover up to her, but don't show a tight there. It was banned, we're good to refuse that. Because, oh. of, because of the authenticity of the Congolese version of wearing. But uh, uh, that's, sorry, the president you just mentioned, he was a brutal president, right? A brutal, but he was good for the foreigners because he took the foreigners out of the Congo. Ah. Very brutal for the Congolese themselves, but he kept some kind of dignity for Africa by standing against the Belgians, standing against the Americans. So he was yeah. a man who gave an image, a strong image outside, but inside he destroyed the people so he can control the country. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I, this is another topic and tell it, but at the end of the day, we also struggle with right leaders in Africa. So in as much as we have two different, we are, our version of struggle is two. We have yeah. the Western, Western world, trying to dominate and then we have bad leaders also doing the very same bad, thing. Bad one. so at the end of the day the real sufferers are the common african man yes. leaders leadership in africa both after right after colonization till date has been a major mm -hmm. struggle so yeah. i think yeah. the main revival for africa is to be delivered from bad leaders and things will start working out but anyway, so that's a discussion between me and you, not the kids. What's the next question? <laughs> I'm going to ask all your questions. Oh, yeah, what's your question? Tell us about music. Music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kintasa, the capital of the Congo, it's called Kintasa the Beautiful. The okay. capital of Rumba. Yeah, Rumba is Kinshasa. King de la Belle, okay. the, the world of happiness, the kingdom of happiness, that's Kinshasa. You know, you said the, the music is the best music sound from all Africa. You know, it's the best. We are don't, 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 don't enter the same trouser with me. Just say it's <laughs> best. It's good for Congo. But if you want to bring Nigeria, you are challenging me. Don't challenge me. <laughs> <laughs> She, she said, please don't argue on the program. <laughs> I, I, I know there is this thing between Nigeria and the Congo, who's leading the, the African continent on the black community. Please don't try, <laughs> don't try. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, what kind of, what, what's the music like? What's the, what's the traditional music called? La rumba. Okay. So rumba is the traditional music, is the founder of the rumba. Like in America, you have the king of soul, the godfather, yes. James yes. Brown, Mr. Brown boss. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but you know, Congo was Papa Wemba. And he, he sings the rumba. It is the slow moving dance between a man and a woman, whether you're young or old. The slow moving, very, very beautifully where very the, the move on the floor. It's like yeah, it's like the the very slow groove from the soul in America. This is why they keep telling all the singer in America came from the Congo. They were slaves in the Congo. 
You never know. You never know because we've lost. We've lost that. Oh, we never know. Maybe soul soul music started from uh, from oh, the. Uh, yeah, yeah, we never know. Yeah. <laughs> You never know because history is just like uh, broken down into pieces. The history Absolutely. between the, the West, the, 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 the colonial slaves and the ones in Africa is broken. So yeah. we wish, I wish that there is a link between those that left and those that are remaining. Mm. But uh, somehow, I hope that would ever come. So yeah. that's talking about music. I think I want to talk about greetings because it's very important to me and children and raising children in the West. What is greeting in Congo and how does that reflect in your day-to-day -day life? Greetings is very important. You cannot address anybody without saying a greeting. The greeting can be hello sister, hello mother, hello dad, hello father, hello yeah. brother, hello sister. But after you say hello, you say you're welcome. Okay, so yeah. you're welcome. This is greeting in the Congo, but in your national language. So, so what is your national? Let's say you want to greet me now. How do you greet me in your language? Jambo Dada, Karibu, Karibu. Oh, that's the same thing as Kenya. That's <laughs> Kwaili. <laughs> You guys are just same, same thing. <laughs> you guys, okay. out of Africa. Everybody came from the Congo. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Ethiopia is salam alaikum. Ethiopia is salam alaikum. Yeah. It's Karibu. Yeah. Yeah, it's Karibu. So uh -huh. they, they, we do have in the Congo, East of Congo, we have the descendants of Aile Selassie who came with Tipo Tip and yeah. in the Congo for thousands now, of years. What I'm going to do is while you're talking, I want to bring up the map that I said I, I downloaded so that the kids will see the 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 where where Congo is and where Ethiopia is. So Congo is 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 um center. in the center of all of them. That's that is the why point. yeah that's why um so I'm I'm still trying to open the page. It's going to open now. That's why the they can speak Swahili and speak all the other languages that are around okay. them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um apart from Swahili, do you have a traditional language you speak? Myself, Kiluba. Okay, That's how the was how do you how do you say good morning in Kuluba? Metuabo. Oh my goodness. Did I get it right? Yeah, excellent. Oh, I did. Metuabo. <laughs> yes, Metuabo. So yeah. so now I you can see kids. Can you see the can you see the um, the map. I'm going to bring up the map of. Uh, look at the map. So you see, if you look up, that is Ethiopia. That is Southern Sudan. That's Kenya, and that is Tanzania. That's Zambia. There's Angola, and there's Gabon. So Dia Congo is there. So that's why they speak Swahili because it's close to Kenya. And then, yeah, you see, so they are bordered by all these countries around here. Yeah. So I think they use this river, this this sea, part of the sea for the slave trade. So they will bring all the slaves yeah, that to true. that place, and then they will take them out of the country. Yeah. So um, that's that's it. That is it. So girls, any other question as we go on? Uh, wait, still is it? So Jumbo, Oops. Jeremy. Oh, that's high. That's high. Uh, Jumbo, yeah, just Jumbo. Yes, yeah, yeah. Hmm? So what's the reply if I say Jumbo to her? Jambo sana. Jambo sana. Jambo, jambo, jambo sana. Ah, yeah, I heard that Jambo sana. Ambari kani. Muzuri sana. Yeah, I was trying to use it. Okay, sorry. I was trying to use it for my children's program. And by the time yeah. my tongue was twisting in the middle, I said, "Nah, nah, nah, I'm not going to embarrass myself." Kenya, Akuna Matata. So there's no worries. No, Akuna Matata is no worries. Yeah, yeah. 
So that's that. That's been a very interesting discussion. Do have we have we finished all our questions? Yes. So are you happy with no Congo? Thank you. Our timekeeper is beginning to hollow. She's our timekeeper. So have you have you asked you've asked all the questions? Say somebody goes and asks you about uh, about Congo and about other countries in Africa we've dealt dealt with, you can do that now. So it has been an interesting journey for me and the girls mm -hmm. and all other children out there because I've learned so much about other African countries and I believe mm -hmm. they have also learned so much. And that's the reason why we started this so that kids around, especially in Scotland, we know that Africa is not all about poor children in the streets. No, 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 Africa no. is a beautiful country, although has a very bad, indelible history. But yeah. we hope that in the future we would make things better, especially by rooting out all bad leaders. I'm, and hoping, I'm hoping by the end of this year I'm taking my children to Africa for the first time. So oh, that's true. Oh, God. That. Africa is <laughs> that. a lot of time for, for me to take them there and see how it looks like to do in Africa. Yeah. yeah she's, been, she's been clamoring about going to Nigeria. It's a promise I'm going to fulfill one day. <laughs> she wants to go to Uganda and Congo. So here you go. When you're going, please put her, take her along. <laughs> so she can go to but one interesting thing is I'm really interested in touring all Africa so that just like I'm doing all this, I'll be able to bring all this real life experience to kids. To see that Africa is more beautiful. I remember that when I was speaking to my Ethiopian brother and brother's family, he was talking about the mountains of Ethiopia being the big, the, the tallest mountain in Africa. And for me, I really didn't know that. I just knew that they were mountains. And I had to go back and say, wow, this is true. And you can imagine just going and actually having that epic experience. It would be wonderful. And I know that because Congo is a rich rainforest country. Oh, there'll yeah. be a lot of meat, bush meat. Mm -hmm. Come to yeah, yeah. yeah. There'll be a lot of bush meat there to bush eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, a lot of food crops because I know that uh, rainforest countries are really food basket if the country is at peace. But yeah, because yeah. there are lots of uh, disharmony and conflict mm -hmm. in Congo, I, I don't think that would, they would ever achieve the main essence. We are praying and hoping that one day Africa would bring out this rich potential and its rich blessing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. And I, I hope that we invite you. you once again. If we invite you once again to tell us more about Africa, you would be welcome to come. Absolutely. It would be my yeah. pleasure. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, kids at home, thank you for joining us today on Reading with Joan and exploring all about Congo. I want to thank our beautiful guest today, Debra. I want to thank my co hosts who have been yawning and stretching <laughs> out and everything they've done, they've tried to do. Oh, wow. I've been quiet the whole time. What did she say? I've been quiet the whole time. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you we'll see you next week bye Saturday bye. on another beautiful country in Africa bye bye, bye. bye.